In today's video, I'm going to show you, at the request of several viewers, how to install Pi-hole on a Synology NAS in a Docker container. Welcome to the channel. My name is Tony, and if this is your first time with us, please consider subscribing. And if you do, hit that little bell so that you're alerted to when I release new content. So I'm going to assume if you're watching this video or you search for a video like this, that you already have an idea of what Pi-hole is and what it does and its purpose. Now, in case you don't, let's just take a quick look at their website. And here you can see at the Pi-hole website, they describe it as a DNS sinkhole that protects your devices from unwanted content without installing any client side software. Now, they say it's easy to install, and I'm going to show you how to do that today on the Synology. It's very responsive. It's very lightweight. It takes minimal hardware. It's typically installed on a Raspberry Pi. It is free open source software. However, donations are always accepted. It helps keep the project going. So that said, let's get started with the installation on the Synology. Couple of prerequisites. You have to have Docker running on the Synology, and I'm not going to show you how to install Docker in this video. Uh, that's one prerequisite. Another prerequisite is that you're not running the Synology internal DNS server. You will have a problem that will conflict with Pi-hole, so it's either one or the other. So that said, let's get started with today's installation. Okay, so I'm inside of the Synology. Let's get started with the installation process. I'm going to launch Docker. I have an icon here on my desktop. And you can see I only have one container running right now, and that's for the RTMP server that I created in another video. So that said, what you want to do is come over to the registry, and you're going to type up in the search box, you're going to type Pi-hole, and you're going to search for a Pi-hole Docker image. And we're going to take the first one that comes up, the official Pi-hole Docker image from Pi-hole.net. So to download it, just click on it and hit the download link, or you could double click on it, whatever is your preference. I'm not going to do that because I already have it downloaded from testing it previously. Once it's fully downloaded, it'll appear here in the images folder and you see it here. So let's go ahead and launch this image. Now I could either double click it or I could just single click it and come up and say launch. And we'll give it a name here, and I'm just going to leave it at the default. What we are going to do is come down to Advanced Settings, and I want to enable Auto Restart so that if the, let's see what it says here, when a container encounters an improper shutdown, the container will try to restart. So that's what we want it to do. Let's come over to Volumes, and now we're going to add a couple of folders, but we have to create those folders first in the file station. So I'll explain more as we're going through this. So let's come over here and click on the file station. And because Docker has been previously installed, that installation created a Docker folder. So inside of this Docker folder, we're going to create a couple of different folders. So the first one we're going to create is called Pi-hole. Okay, now you see here inside of this Docker, folder, we have a Pi-hole folder. Now inside of this folder, we're going to create two more subfolders. The first one we're going to call Pi-hole again. And the next one we're going to call dnsmask.d. That's what's recommended uh, on the GitHub. Okay, now we have our two subfolders created inside the Pi-hole folder. That's inside of the Docker folder. So that's all here for the file station. We can close this. Now we're going to go back to the advanced settings and we're going to click in the volume tab under add folder. And we're going to now take those folders that we just created. So we're going to go inside the Docker folder, inside the pie hole folder. And you can see here you have, here are the two folders that we just created in file station. We're going to map the DNS mask.d we're going to select that, and now we're going to mount it to the folder that's going to be created inside of this Docker container. So it's slash Etsy slash DNS mask dot D. 
forward slash, and then we're going to add another folder. And we're going to go get the other folder we created, the piehole subfolder. And we're going to mount that to .et, etsy, etc slash piehole. So when you're all done, it should look like this. You should have your folder that you created here on file station mapped over to the Docker container locations here. Once you have that done, we're going to click on network. If you're finding any value in today's video, please give it a thumbs up. It lets YouTube know you like what we're doing here on the channel. Now let's get back to the video. We're just going to come down to where it says use same network as the Docker host. So we do want that. And then we have one couple more things to do here under environment. So the first thing we're going to do is set up three new variables. So the first variable is going to be called web password. So we're going to enter the variable name and then under value, we're going to create the password that we want to use to access Piehole. So I'm just going to make it simple for now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. In production, please use a stronger password. So then we're going to add another variable. And this one's going to be called DNS mask underscore listening. And for value, we're just going to say local. We're going to create one more variable and that's web port. And for the value, I'm going to use 8080. Now you can use that or you can use any other value as long as you're not using that port somewhere else. And then the last thing we're going to do, we're done creating variables, but we do have to edit a variable down here. We have to edit the server IP address. And this is going to be the IP address of the Synology that's will be running the piehole container. So in my case, it's 192.168.25.60. You would put your NAS's IP address here. Let's go ahead and say apply. And let's go ahead and say next. And now it's just verifying everything we just set up. There's our folder mappings. Here are the variables. Just confirm everything. Run this container after the wizard is finished. I'll leave that checked. Let's go ahead and say apply. And now let's go back up to the Docker containers. And you can see here that we have the Nginx container running, the RTMP server. And then here's the PyHole server, uh, the PyHole container that we just created. Okay, so now that we have the installation complete and the PyHole Docker container is running up on the Synology, if you look at my screen here, you can see I'm at the login page. Now, how did I get here? Simply pointed my browser to the IP address of my NAS, which is 192.168.25.60. In your case, it would be the IP address of your NAS, colon, followed by the port number. In my case, I used 8080 then forward slash the word admin or lowercase. So your server IP address followed by the port number forward slash followed by the word admin will get you to the login page. Now, if I come over to the login page and right off the bat, you could see some stats up at the top. It has 82,000 over 82,000 domains on the block list. So far it's blocking 11.4% of information on my own my network. I have four queries that are blocked out of a total of 35 queries that have been made coming from four clients. So we could take a closer look at that if we log in. So we'll click login over here in the left menu. And it's asking for the password here. And this is the password you created in the installation process when you created that web password variable. So I'm just going to put in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight which is the password we used. Let's log in. And you can see here now it's giving us a little bit more of a detail. Now I don't have much information here because this container's only been up and running for several minutes. And you can see here it's querying over the last 24 hours. It's showing the query types, 
queries answered. Here it's showing you the top block domain names. And it looks like it's blocking device dash metrics dash us dash amazon.com for hits. Here's the domains it's allowing. Coming from it shows you the client it's coming from. Now I'm not off the sure off the top of my head. Um that 171 what client that is on my network but i could i could double check my dhcp pool but in any event there you go i have docker i actually i have pihole running in a docker container on a synology nas now if you wanted uh one of the other things you can do is come in here under settings and come up across to the top and go to the dns tab i actually like to use cloudflare when I'm using Pi-hole, so then I'm just going to uncheck Google, select Cloudflare down here, and this is again a matter of personal choice. I'm going to click Save, so you can select your DNS settings, and then if you wanted to add local DNS where you can look up machines on your local network by DNS name instead of by IP address, just click on Local DNS, DNS records, and you can come up here. You can add the domain name that you want to use and the associated IP address of the machine. So for example, if I wanted to get to my router, I could put in router.tonysmeraldi.com and then followed by the IP address of my router and then go ahead and add that record. So there you go, Pi-hole running on a Synology NAS inside of a Docker container. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up be sure to check out some of my other videos that I have listed up above. Remember to subscribe, like, and share this video. And I want to thank you for using my Amazon affiliate links. I know they don't change your price, but they do help out the channel. My name is Tony with Quick Tech Solutions. As always, please stay safe. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. And as always, I'd like to thank our Patreon supporters. And if you would like to help support the channel, there's links to the Patreon page and PayPal down in the video description.